Hello, everybody, and a pleasant good evening to you all. Thank you for tuning in to the Lipscomb Athletics YouTube as we bring you live college soccer on this gorgeous Thursday night in the Music City. The Lipscomb Bisons hosting the Eastern Kentucky Colonels. A matchup of two teams in the top half of the A-Sun table. A pair of teams that are unbeaten in conference play up to this point. Lipscomb a perfect 3-0 in the A-Sun. Eastern Kentucky, meanwhile, with one win and two draws up to this point. Lipscomb the favorite. Eastern Kentucky, though, did take a match off Lipscomb last season. They ended up meeting again in the A-Sun tournament that Lipscomb hosted, and the Bisons got their revenge, a 4-0 victory here at the Lipscomb Soccer Complex that catapulted them into the A-Sun championship match where they won, punching their ticket to yet another NCAA tournament berth. Let's get you the starting lineups for both teams, and we'll start with the visiting Colonels. Starting in the midfield, number two, Allie Kirk. Starting on the attack, number four, Maddie Limery. Number seven, Audrey Anderson. And number 13, Lucy Ream. In the back will be Mackenzie Burdick. In the midfield, Myla Sharpless. And on the defense, number 21, Bailey Lanter. And number 27, Maya Ransom. In the midfield, Thelia Lopez and Caitlin Rowlett. In goal tonight is the ever steady Lauren Seedlock, wearing number 99. And for the Lipscomb Bisons, they look something like this. Starting in goal, the reigning A-Sun goalkeeper of the year, C.J. Graham. She'll be protected in the back line by Shelby Kraft, Katia Hanger, Logan McFadden, Angela Steidel, and Emily Patty. In the midfield tonight, Faith Adams and Kelly Byler. And on the attack, Emanuela Shirk and Kalea Perry. So here we go, Lipscomb. In their black uniforms, Eastern Kentucky in the road white with the red stripe running across the chest. Numbers in maroon on the back. And we are inching closer to kickoff here from the Lipscomb Soccer Complex. You're watching A-Sun Soccer on the Lipscomb Athletics YouTube. No Severson with you for the duration. A pair of unbeaten teams in A-Sun play. Lipscomb comes in 6-4-1 and one overall, 3-0 and oh in A-Sun Action, Eastern Kentucky brings with them a record of 5-2-2, two, and 1-0-2 two, oh, in conference play. And here comes Lipscomb right off the bat. Kalea Perry bounces back to her right foot. Shot saved by Seedlock. And lightning quick, this Lipscomb attack nearly got on the board first. Kalea Perry, a nifty move to get the ball back to her right foot. Shot on target. And quickly the first save of the night for the fifth-year senior out of Simpsonville, South Carolina, Lauren Seedlock. And these two teams met twice last season with Eastern Kentucky winning in the regular season. Lipscomb bouncing back by winning in the A-Sun tournament as Eastern Kentucky now with a counter. Shelby Kraft was there with the header to get it away and now C.J. Graham is going to collect. Eastern Kentucky won that regular season match at home and of course then they had to come to Nashville for the A-Sun tournament. Won their quarterfinal game, but fell 4-0 to Lipscomb in the A-Sun semifinal. That, of course, was Lipscomb's ninth consecutive appearance in the A-Sun tournament. And it got them to yet another NCAA tournament. They have been the class of the A-Sun under head coach Kevin O'Brien. Adams gets it ahead to Emily Patty across into the box. Kalea Perry trying to track it down, but she won't get there. And a goal kick upcoming for Eastern Kentucky. A thumbs up from Kelly Byler, who liked the service from Emily Patty. She was the one nearest. Kalea Perry was kind of the safety valve there on the back side. Lipscomb. Nine points in conference play with their three wins. One point behind Liberty, who has three wins and one tie. The Flames with ten points. A miss kick there from Seedlock is going to give a corner kick to Lipscomb. Bit of a miscue there in the back line as Seedlock came off her line to try to boot it away. It glanced off her foot, and so the Bisons will have a corner kick gifted to them. Kalea Perry there setting up to take it with those orange and yellow cleats. Olivia Carapaza playing it short just in case Perry wants it to go her way. 
Perry will go long, a low line drive, skittering on the turf. It's bouncing around and cleared out by the back line of Eastern Kentucky. Bailey Lanter steps up to boot it back out of play. Patty wants Kraft, who gives it right back. Patty being hounded by Sharpless. Perry now gets it to her left foot, a shot, a rocket, wide right. Couple of feet to the right of the post. Lipscomb on the attack early on. Pretty good passing in the attacking third. Weathering the on-ball defense of the, of the Colonel's back line. And we remain scoreless a few minutes in here. Just got started from the Lipscomb soccer complex on a gorgeous Thursday night in Nashville. Temperature 70 degrees at kickoff, not a cloud in the sky, a slight breeze going across the pitch from left to right. Lipscomb returning home to the Lipscomb Soccer Complex for, a first, for the first time in a while. It's their first of five, or four straight rather, home matches after a five game road trip. This is their first home game since September 4th. That was a 2-1 win against Florida International as they bounced back from a loss to Idaho State. Mackenzie Burdick was trying to keep possession there, but a bit stiff with the touch and it trickles out of play. So a throw in upcoming for Lipscomb. Byler, nice one-touch pass to Perry, who cuts across, but Perry was offside. Nice looking sequence as Byler tried to find her attacking forward in the front. Perry a little too ambitious there with that run. So a free kick upcoming for Eastern Kentucky. Five minutes gone by into the first half. The whole pitch now covered in shade with the sun peeking through the tree line. Just a little bit here on the right side of the field. Here's Allie Kirk. Playing it back to Lanter. She finds Sharpless. Now Lucy Ream gets it knocked away. And here come the Bisons as they repossess. Shelby Kraft across the middle to Shirk. Thought about going down the left wing. Nice challenge by Thelia Lopez to win it back for Eastern Kentucky. And she is unable to connect with Audrey Anderson. It'll belong to the Bisons. Eastern Kentucky has picked up positive results in each of its last six contact contests, the third longest streak in program history. A couple of scoreless draws, bookending a win against Central Arkansas as they opened up ace on play. Scoreless draw with North Alabama at home open up their conference slate then they beat Central Arkansas at home 3-2 and most recently drew with Bellarmine nil-nil on the road last Sunday Carapaza in the midfield facing stiff pressure plays it back for Hanger has McFadden there decides to go up and Lipscomb throw and upcoming These two programs meeting for just the third time. Both prior meetings came last season, as we previously mentioned, once in the regular season and once in the A-Sun tournament. Nice flick pass from Faith Adams there. She gets it back, a left foot strike, a touch steep. Faith Adams certainly has the leg for that kind of shot, well outside the 18. Eastern Kentucky did have that one probe into the golden area here on the left side early on on a counterattack, but since then in the four minutes since it's been all Lipscomb here in the attacking third. Colonel's trying to possess, 
They'll get a free kick here. And this might be their chance to get possession onto this other side of the white midfield stripe. It's Lanter with plenty of space. Time to make a decision. And she finds Sharpless, who plays it back for Ream. Through the legs, but right back to the Bisons. And here comes Faith Adams. Ream did well. Pretty slick looking play as she played that pass between the legs of Adams, but it was right to a Bison. Shelby Kraft applying pressure for Lipscomb on the attack. Nicely done by Lanter to get around her, and that'll be a fun matchup to watch all night long. Lanter against Kraft, two of the best players in the A Sun. Can Shelby Kraft? Reigning A Sun Defensive Player of the Year was the preseason A Sun Defensive Player of the Year. And of course, Lanter, a fifth year senior out of Lexington, one of the top center backs. And we could see that matchup a lot. Kraft against Lanter. It was Lanter winning that first 1v1 between those two. Tough challenge and a trip as Shirk goes tumbling to the grass. And a free kick up coming for Lipscomb. Well, you can't ask for a better start to conference action if you're head coach Kevin O'Brien. He was honest early on, you know, when asked about how this team is going to go about defending their five straight A-Sun titles, he said, we are not looking to defend an A-Sun championship. We are planning to attack another one. And that is what they have done through the first three matches in their A-Sun slate, they have been on the attack. Tremendous goal scoring in terms of capitalizing on chances. Ball pressure has been off the charts, and then this back line has been untouchable. You look at what Lipscomb has done offensively as of late, seven straight games with at least one goal, five of those seven games with two goals. Shirk was cutting through. Has her pass knocked away. Eastern Kentucky wants a big challenge. But here is Katia Hanger to play it back to Graham. Maddie Lemery up to challenge the pass, and the Colonels have a chance. It's Lemery right at Graham with the right foot strike. So the Colonels attacking pressure there create a steal. And a one-on-one -on -one look for Lemery, who lets it loose from inside the 18 and was unable to find the back of the net as C.J. Graham picks up the save. Physical challenge here on the near side as Patty was sent flying out of bounds. Just over 10 minutes into the first half here at the Lipscomb Soccer Complex, scoreless. But each team now has registered a shot on goal. Both of these phenomenal goalkeepers with a save. C.J. Graham for Lipscomb and Lauren Seedlock for Eastern Kentucky. That's Steidel on the far side. Now McFadden. Hanger. Adams. For Patty, who gives it right back. And it was out of bounds. Emily Patty with both hands outstretched. She thought it was in play. Quick turnaround for Eastern Kentucky. Lemery nearly found Myla Sharpless, the senior midfielder out of Pittsburgh. Colonel's control. Here's Ream. Dicing into the attacking third. Left foot cross from McFadden there waiting. Plays it right back out for Rowlett. Who loses control. It's Byler, Carapaza. And now it's a foot race. Kalea Perry on the break. Left foot saved by Seedlock. Perry regathers. Still in the danger zone and hits the side netting. And it will be a corner for Lipscomb as it was knocked away. Fantastic play from both sides there. A perfectly timed run from Perry. Her first shot was pawed away by Seedlock who gets her second save. 
second attempt was knocked out of play by a colonel, and so the Bisons will have another corner, this one from the far side, and I believe that is Carapaza there to take it. It's short for Shirk. Oh, a little flip back, and it was out of bounds, and a goal kick for Eastern Kentucky. Well, if you play a ball up for Kalea Perry and she just has to outrun a center back, I think nine times out of ten, Perry's going to win that race. She just has those long strides, and she can run it down if you at least give her a chance, and that's what Lipscomb did on that last run. Kraft finds Patty inside, Byler, and should have another Lipscomb corner kick, and we will. Five shots, three corners for Lipscomb here in the early going. Couple of shots on target. Both shots on goal coming from Kalea Perry. A service from Adams ends up being a shot off the top post. Looked like a curling cross from Adams. Ended up being a terrific shot and just hit the top crossbar. And Lipscomb still knocking on the door here. Eastern Kentucky looking for a big clearance with possession and they might have a counter chance here. It's Lemery. Lipscomb regathers. Emily Patty with a great touch there to stifle the counter. And is Perry off? Yes, she was. Fourteenth minute here in Nashville. Scoreless, but we have already seen our fair share of action. Lipscomb with the bulk of the chances up to this point. Eastern Kentucky has created a couple lightning quick chances with their ability to press Lipscomb. Created a turnover or two and turned that into a couple of good opportunities. Here's a ball played up for Sharpless. McFadden boxes her out and then sends it wide. Adams with room to operate. Gets it to Shirk in the middle of the field. Carapaza. Up ahead for Steidel. Turns to her right. In the box. Byler nearly got a head on it. And a stiff challenge from Bailey Lancer, who has been busy early on. Bailey Lancer has been locked down in that center back position. And the Colonels can reset here with a boot from their keeper, Lauren Seedlock. Steidel wins it for the Bisons. Lipscomb picking up some territory. We'll have throw in a little bit closer to their end goal. Trying to get it to Perry, creates space. Left foot cross on the ground, it's Byler, oh, knocked away. Fantastic defending from Eastern Kentucky and here comes their counter. Oh, and an errant pass right into the waiting grasp of Emily Patty. And now a cross inside to Byler, plays it off her shoulder and in! It's Kelly Byler! Opens her tab on this Thursday night. And it started with that first touch off the shoulder, down to her right foot, and gets it past Seedlock. It's Lipscomb 1, Eastern Kentucky nil. The goal coming in the 16th minute of action here from Lipscomb Soccer Complex. And that's now eight straight matches for Lipscomb with at least one goal. Kelly Byler. Well, 
you felt like Lipscomb was due the way that they were on the attack, continually pressuring that Eastern Kentucky back line. And it is Kelly Byler who breaks through with her sixth goal of the season. Extends her lead over Kalea Perry to now two goals for the team high. Perry not far behind with four. And the assist will go to Faith Adams, whose perfect ball allowed Byler to put that one in the back of the net. It is the third assist of the season for Faith Adams. Patty up for Shirk and headed away. That was Maya Ransom there to clear it, at least for the moment. Shirk loses her footing. Kraft steps up, trying to get through the kernels. And Lipscomb will be awarded a corner kick. Well, scoring first against Eastern Kentucky certainly was a key coming in. Eastern Kentucky 5-0 and when they score first. They are 0-2 when their opponent scores first. Fourth corner. It's a good one into the box. And Allie Kirk skying up to send it away. A lot of veterans sprinkled in the starting lineup tonight for head coach Matt Kosinuk, who's in his fourth season at the helm of the Colonels. Kirk, one of them. Here's another header off the corner. And Eastern Kentucky again, mounting a break. They've got numbers. It's three on two. Kraft hustling back to make it more of an even matchup. And a play up ahead. And Graham times her run perfectly as she comes up off her line at the right time there to scoop down and claim it. But again, you see the speed with which Eastern Kentucky can mount those counters. Their quick passes on the attack have been outstanding, but now they have to recover as here comes Lipscomb. It's Perry on the left side, on the ground, and gathered by Eastern Kentucky. Back and forth we go, these lightning quick counters. Carapaza intercepts a pass. And here we go, it's Byler who is just off. Flag comes up from the linesman. Nineteenth minute here in Nashville. Lipscomb up one nil on the Kelly Byler goal. Off the assist from Faith Adams. Sixth goal of the season for Byler, third assist for Adams. And the Bisons continuing their strong form. Again, three wins in a row. They've won five out of their last seven. And one of those last seven was a one one tie with Vanderbilt, SEC opponent that they drew with. What a big result that was in a highly anticipated matchup between the Commodores and the Bisons that took place across town from here. And that was a part of that five game road stretch that these Bisons undertook. And now they've got four in a row here at home. Far side, that is Rowlett. With it knocked away. And now Ransom will take the throw. Colonels working their way up the field. McFadden steps in front of that throw. And now wins the challenge. And here is Byler with Perry on the break. And a nice little flick there, at least to buy some time. And Perry was off. The flag stays up. Oh, wow. So the assistant referee had his flag up for offside. The referee did not see him. Kept play going. And Perry is taken down. And a free kick will be awarded to the Bisons. And Eastern Kentucky fans asking why that flag was not kept up players as well, and rightly so, as 
Perry appeared to be offside, and instead it'll be a dangerous free kick right outside the 18 for the Bisons. Eddie Lemery visibly upset as the referee did not see the flag come up. Her attention was on the action as Perry was on the break. And so a dangerous set piece opportunity. We'll see if Eastern Kentucky can stand tall here. Lipscomb already up one nil. Carapaza fakes it and stepping up to boot it away is Audrey Anderson. Hanger sends it back. Ransom steps, shields, lets it go out and a goal kick upcoming for the Colonels. Twenty-two minutes and change here in the first half. First match here in the Volunteer State for Eastern Kentucky as part of their weekend road trip through Tennessee. They'll take on Austin P on the road on Sunday. Former OVC rivals, now A Sun rivals. McFadden somehow fits that pass through the tight window, and here we go. It's Shelby Kraft on the break. Seedlock has to step up. Came outside the box, so couldn't use her hands. And a rushed pass goes right back to Lipscomb. Here's Adams near the A-Sun logo. The service into Byler, and Byler was off. And Lipscomb continues to test that boundary between on and offside. Faith Adams has had a couple of dimes already up to this point. Of course, she had the assist to Byler earlier in the game, but her services have been on point up to this stage in the match. Sharpless playing it back for the right back, who then sends it over to the goalkeeper. And they shift sides. It's Burdick in her own zip code. Trying to get it to Lemery. Patty steps in front. And it's Adams up for Kraft. Shelby Kraft, the human highlight reel, is on the break. Waiting for her teammates. Flicks it up. Byler there. Just over frame. Byler nearly with her second of the night. Had a bead on that ball as she tried to direct it on target. And it ended up just over the crossbar. But again, more accurate passing from Lipscomb here early on in this first half. Nine shots for the Bisons. Forcing a couple of saves, and they do have a goal. Ended up being a closer play than what maybe we initially thought as Audrey Anderson showcasing her wheels, forcing C.J. Graham to just punch it out of play. And, and now our first couple of substitutions as Coach Kosinuk makes a change. Lemery will get a breather, among others. Greta Gunn makes her first appearance of the match. Here's Kalea Perry trying to find Byler, but just too many white jerseys in the vicinity. So Maddie Murphy comes in for Thelia Lopez, Greta Gunn for Maddie Lemery. Those two now on for the Colonels. Under 19 minutes to go in this first half. Bison's holding the advantage on the goal in the 16th minute from Kelly Byler. coming off a 2-0 win over Central Arkansas. Kalea Perry and Shelby Kraft both scored in that match. 
23 goals on the season for the Bisons. That leads the A's son and is among the national leaders. Currently 40th in the NCAA. It's Carapaza up for Kraft and she was off. That's the sixth offside call going against Lipscomb here in the first half. Eastern Kentucky has not been flagged for offside ones. And I thank you for Coach O'Brien. Of course, you would love those runs to be timed up a little better, but you are okay with the aggressiveness, certainly. Sharpless, nicely done, finds a wide open teammate on the far side. That's Ransom. Couldn't get around Shirk. Last touch by Shirk, says the lineman. And here comes another substitution for Eastern Kentucky. They're going to take the throw in and let the sub come in at the next dead ball. As they still go over strategy. A foul on the far side as Shirk was taken down. That was Maddie Murphy fresh off the bench with that physical challenge. McFadden from the A-Sun logo. McFadden had a goal the last time these two teams played as a center back. That was the game where McFadden punched it in from midfield on a free kick. The Bisons poured on in that semifinal, 4-0 the final score. And so you can be sure, obviously high stakes for this matchup, but certainly the taste of that defeat that ended the Colonel's season last year. Another reason added to the list for why this one is so important for them. And now we'll have the substitution that we alluded to earlier. Myler Sharpless will exit. And coming on will be Kylie Fitzgerald here for the near side. It's Adams and Fitzgerald jockeying for position. Carapaza a flick. Kraft, at least making Lauren Seedlock think about it. Again, nine shots for Lipscomb, only one shot for Eastern Kentucky, but it was a good one. Maddie Lemery right on the 18 after Eastern Kentucky forced a Lipscomb turnover deep in their own end. Had a shot on target that was right to C.J. Graham. Kraft, a pass a little bit behind Shirk. I think if she had the opportunity to do it over again, would have led her a little bit more. Shirk wins the ball anyway, plays it in. Knocked away for the moment. Kraft trips on it as she tried to regather. And an errant pass will leave possession with Lipscomb all the same. And a couple of more substitutions waiting in the wings for the Colonels. Here's Fitzgerald. Up ahead, trying to find Andre Anderson. But it's out of bounds. And our first substitution for Lipscomb as Emanuela Shirk will get a blow. And Grace Oliver will come in off the bench. The redshirt junior out of Maryville, Tennessee. It is pretty astounding just the depth that head coach Kevin O'Brien has at his disposal. They can really go deep into their bench and not lose a whole lot. That wasn't always the case last year with the injuries that this team suffered, but they bring back pretty much everybody from last year's squad that went 15-5-1, including an unbeaten 7-0-2 mark in a Sun play. Under 14 minutes to go before the halftime whistle. Here's a nice ball played up. Perry made sure she was on this time. Left foot flick, and Seedlock couldn't quite tell if that was going to be on or off, so she went for it, knocks it away, and Lipscomb will get the corner kick. So Perry, you could tell, was 
super cognizant of where she was on the pitch that time, waited and waited and then turned on the Jets. And since that seed lock was coming up as well, tried to get it up and over her head. It'll go down as a shot for Perry. That's now 10 shots for Lipscomb in this first half. Lancer has it for the Colonels. Carapaza challenges. Throw and coming for the visitors. Craft, what a touch pass. And here come the Bisons, it's Byler. For Adams, back for Patty, Carapaza. Up ahead on the ground and easy enough for Lauren Seedlock. Lipscomb so happy to have Kelly Byler back, who of course was injured in the second game of last season, missed pretty much the entire campaign, had to watch from the sidelines as her team went back to the NCAA tournament. But of course was so good Two seasons ago in that COVID-shortened spring 2021 season had nine goals leading the A-Sun. And she's got six this year for the first 12 games. Oliver. Trying to get around Allie Kirk. Colonels win it. And they want to go fast. Trying to play it up ahead for Gunn, the sophomore. But it's out of her reach. Lanter being pursued by Byler and makes the wise decision to send it out and let her team reset. White jerseys retreating as they set up their defense. Steidel will take the throw. Headed towards the middle, clearance from Fitzgerald, right to Patty. They have room here on the right side. Patty wants it all. And a good looking shot attempt that does drift wide left. Brooke Harden will come on, replacing Allie Kirk for EKU. It is remarkable, this turnaround for Eastern Kentucky. Kosanuk in his fourth season at the helm at 4-12-2 in 2019. Brought it up to 4-5-1. Last season they were in the middle of the A-Sun in fall 2021, that four, five, and one mark was in spring 2021. And then here this year, up to a five, two, and two start with one of their two losses being at Kentucky. Positive results in each of their last six contests. They have not lost since August 28th, since that aforementioned Kentucky contest up in Lexington. Two teams playing really, really good soccer. Lipscomb with an opportunity, with a win, to regain first place in the A-Sun. Here's Greta Gunn, who would have liked to maybe keep more control of that touch that glanced off the top of her left boot. East EKU will keep it, though, in the attacking third. Carapaza now clears it back to the midfield. Perry boxing out her defender in a race. And Lanter gets a little bit of a shove. Perry, though, wins it and now goes down. No whistle. And Ransom will collect. Physical play there on the wings with two players going full speed ahead. Lanter and Perry crashing into each other. And then Ransom did well to pick her teammate up and win back possession. Pass intended for Fitzgerald, trickles through for Gunn, who plays it back to Fitzgerald. Nice move to her left foot, up for Gunn. Patty steps up, 
and boots it out of bounds. It is incredible how well Lipscomb rallies to the ball. Team defense, truly, and they have the one-on-one -on -one defenders as good as anybody. But their ability to help each other out, be in the right spot at the right time. It is truly instinct and talent and repetition and practice that all go into that. Ball headed up. Byler trying to win it. Kraft also in the area, trying to sniff it out. And EKU maybe would like to play the possession game here, and they will. They'll settle and set up their attack. Oh, now they want it all. Gunn with a perfectly timed run. Graham has to come out, and she sends it back to the midfield. Really great run there from Greta Gunn. Forced the hand of C.J. Graham to come out. And here come the Colonels again. It's Murphy. Fitzgerald for Gunn. McFadden steps in front to claim it. EKU showing some more life, though, here in the last couple of minutes. Murphy again with space. Here comes EKU. And just past Gunn. Been the final couple of movements that have eluded EKU here on these chances. As we now have seven minutes to go before halftime. Lipscomb leading 1-0 on the goal from Kelly Byler. High arcing boot, McFadden up to the task. Murphy trying to keep a grasp on it, and it's Adams instead. Hanger, Carapaza, Bison's trying to switch fields. Carapaza looking for a teammate. Finds a white jersey instead. And here we go. Greta Gunn, one on one with McFadden. Up ahead. Rowlett, not this time. Good looking sequence there as Rowlett came all the way up from mid the midfield, the freshman. Trying to work a two man game with Greta Gunn, who has been active tonight. Really good minutes off the bench for number 30. Collision, Perry wins it for Lipscomb. McFadden up for Byler. Three on four here for the Bisons. Now three on five. Byler still finds Perry who cuts it back to the middle. Into the box, Kraft there nearly poached it. A great step in front, nearly got a toe on it. As she gets met by her teammate Kelly Byler, and what a trio that is. Kraft, Byler, and Perry outnumbered and still nearly had a terrific opportunity to put a second goal on the board. Not too many better in terms of which three you would pick to run a break than Perry, Kraft, and Byler. Three high IQ soccer individuals terms of knowing where to be and where to pass to and how to finish. 40th minute here at the Lipscomb Soccer Complex. It's Patty. Up ahead, leading Kraft. Ransom on an island, plays it back. Little bit of a skitter and Seedlock will settle for the clear. It'll be a Lipscomb throw in. Dangerous play there caused by the pressure from Kraft who was willing to hustle and breathe down Ransom's neck. That may have hurt that pass back. Couple of subs, Perry will get a rest, well deserved, as will Faith Adams. And Marcella Cash comes on. In addition to Tori Wheeler. And EKU find an equalizer for before the break. Had a couple of chances, still officially only with one shot. 
that was on target, but some good looks, some sequences that have forced Lipscomb to react and make the right decision in a short amount of time. And so far the Bisons have been up to that task, but EKU has threatened on a handful of occasions in the attacking third. Some really quick counters that have been shut down by just an errant pass. And that's been the difference. That back line of Lipscomb so experienced. It's Wheeler. Getting it knocked away. Still fighting for it though. Still hustling and now EKU unable to keep it. It's its title and then Kraft. And the Colonels now, maybe with some space. Byler comes sliding in. Now collides with their teammate and that gives it back to the Colonels. It's Fitzgerald up for gun. Graham comes in to claim it. That's heady goalkeeping. That's gotta be the fifth or sixth time already that CJ Graham has timed when she comes out to play the ball at the exact right time. Greta Gunn has been a difference maker off the bench for EKU tonight. Fresh energy off the pine and she has made things happen. So far though, no goals to show for it. As Lipscomb plays it up for Marcella Cash. And she's going one on one with Ransom. Big collision, Ransom falls and a throw in coming for Lipscomb. Initially signaled towards EKU, the referee overrules. Seventy-five seconds to go before the halftime whistle. Plenty to like for both teams here through the first 45. Can Lipscomb find another one here in the waning moments of the first 45? Grace Oliver will get it before it gets to the corner flag. Service into the box. Stood up by the defense. Here come the Colonels now with 45. Seconds remaining, they'll get a free kick. And we could have, no, no card for the challenge. That's the right call. Clock continues to tick away. Colonels will have to get something going quickly here. 30 seconds in counting. They're really taking this time with the free kick. 25 seconds now. Kick into the wind. Lipscomb possesses. Here comes Shelby Kraft. Played back up. And that should put a bow on this first half as Greta Gunn hounds Emily Patty. Lipscomb will enter the halftime break up 1-0 on the goal from Kelly Byler in the 16th minute. A gorgeous assist from Faith Adams who curled across into Byler who was on the break, time to run. Played it off her upper shoulder, got it down to her foot, where she then buried the shot past a diving Lauren Seedlock. It was Lipscomb, the aggressors throughout that first half. Ten shots, including four shots on goal. Three saves for Lauren Seedlock, otherwise we'd have a little more lopsided score at the break. EKU found their footing offensively in the final 20, 25 minutes. Really generated some good chances and that all traced back to the sophomore Greta Gunn, the 5'6 forward out of Westchester, Ohio. Really since her arrival, she made things happen, was on the same page as her midfielders. Some good passes up in the attacking third. Took advantage of a Lipscomb turnover deep in their own territory. Luckily for Lipscomb, C.J. Graham was right there to stop the shot from Maddie Lemery. And Lipscomb, plenty of runs that were stifled by the flag. Six offside calls going against the Bisons there as both Perry and Kraft were the, uh, uh, <laughs> what's the right word? They were the cause of those flags. We'll leave it at that. But uh, as we mentioned, you know, throughout the match, really good aggressiveness from Lipscomb as they pressed 
unceasingly against that uh, that EKU back line. So at the break, it is Lipscomb 1, EKU nil, and we'll see what the second 45 has in store. We'll step aside when we come back. Second half action from the Lipscomb Soccer Complex in Nashville.
All right, hello and welcome back to the Lipscomb Soccer Complex here on a gorgeous Thursday night in the Music City. Noah Severson with you for the duration. It was an exciting opening half to this matchup between two unbeaten in-conference play rivals, Lipscomb and Eastern Kentucky. Lipscomb on the board thanks to a goal in the 16th minute from Kelly Byler. The assist from Faith Adams, a beautiful curling pass that Byler played off of her chest, down to her feet, and then buried the shot past Lauren Seedlock. And since then, Lipscomb had more chances. EKU mustered up a couple of their own late in that first half, but were unable to find an equalizer. And so we'll see what is in store here for the second half of play. Again, Lipscomb, a perfect 3-0 in A-Sun action. Eastern Kentucky, one win, two ties through their first three conference matches. Five points on the season for EKU, nine points through three matches in conference play for the hosting Bisons. Kalea Perry, who was such a big part of that first half for Lipscomb, did not have a goal, but did have six shots, including three of them on goal, all saved by the fifth year senior, Lauren Seedlock. Lipscomb in that first half, 10 shots in total, four of them on target, the three from Perry and the one from Byler, which of course found the back of the net. Here is Perry with a gorgeous cross, just nobody home there to receive it. And it'll go all the way to the far sideline. Lipscomb, one point behind Liberty in the A-Sun standings, Liberty of course Three wins, one tie. They've played four conference matches, so Lipscomb, after tonight, will have played the same amount. They're holding to hold on here for the win and pick up three points. That would move them into first, and they would have that advantage by two points if they were able to hold on for the win. Goal kick upcoming for the Colonels. A look at some scores from around the A-Sun tonight. Four matches going on. Liberty beating up on Central Arkansas, 6-0 is the score in that game in Lynchburg. Austin P and Bellerman scoreless in the second half. That matchup taking place in Clarksville. That game of interest to both of these two teams because EKU will be at Austin P on Sunday. They'll make the one hour bus trip up to Clarksville, face the Governors. And Lipscomb will host Bellerman on Sunday. That game will be streamed on YouTube. The other game going on, North Alabama and Queens, they are scoreless in the second half as well. That matchup taking place in Charlotte, North Carolina. Certainly when you look at today's slate, this matchup was the headliner, a rematch of last year's A-Sun semifinal which Lipscomb won 4-0 to even up the season series with the Colonels at a game apiece after EKU won in the regular season. Perry trying to get around Bailey Lanter, but that's just not an easy thing to do. Bailey Lanter has been a bright spot tonight for the Colonels, as stout as ever in the back line. Already has held her own against challenges from Shelby Kraft, Kalea Perry. McFadden gets it to Kraft. Turns, burns, finds Shirk. Tight window there, and Lanter snuffs out the pass that was intended for KP. Now here's Shirk. Steidel. Carapaza. Pressure from Sharpless. And the Bisons will switch fields. Fitzgerald right in the face of the Bison. It will be a Lipscomb throw. Perry in the middle of the field. Turns to her left foot, wants a shot, and it's off the post. Oh, ho, ho. Kalea Perry has come tantalizingly close to a goal now on four occasions. That's her fourth shot on target. And that one denied by 
the far bar. A strike there as Seedlock was kind of shifted towards her right on the line. Perry went across her body for that shot. And a really good opportunity as a stiff challenge. Byler with a little bit of a shove and a free kick up coming for the visitors. Eastern Kentucky does have the reputation under their head coach, Matt Kosinuk, as being a second-half team. Last season, 17 of their 25 goals came in the second half or overtime. And so you've got to think it is positive that they are only down one goal now with how that first half went and when you consider that the Colonels did have some chances of their own. So we'll see if they can bury one here in the second 45. You've got to think... Even just a draw would be a phenomenal result for these Colonels here on the road in a hostile environment. They try to keep this unbeaten streak alive against six straight positive results, including a win and two ties to open up their conference slate. Draws with North Alabama and Bellarmine, a win over Central Arkansas. Free kick. Bouncing around and trickling out of play, and it was last touched by a bison. Good look there for the Colonels, as I believe that was Caitlin Rowlett who took the free kick. It'll be the second corner for EKU, and it's a good one. Far post, oh, and it bounces out. And Perry will try to clear it. Can't quite do so. It's still bouncing around. A settle and a shot, no. Denied, and finally the clearance. A bit of bated breath there for the Bisons as you never quite can tell what's going to happen when the ball is just kind of trickling around in the box and there's bodies everywhere and who's going to get to it? Who's going to put it on frame? That time finally cleared away by Lipscomb. KU retains possession. Tough to see there on the far side of the field. Pretty dark. Once you reach that sideline, it's really the edge of where the lights will reach. Lipscomb, of course, in their black jerseys tonight. Blending into the night sky. Here's Rowlett. Going to switch fields. And finds Lancer. Up for Sharpless, Carapaza steps in front and sends it skyward. Carapaza having a really nice season. Kind of quietly, 32nd in the country in assists. She's got five of them, just delivers a great ball. And Sharpless will send an attempt north of the top crossbar. Just trying to keep C.J. Graham honest back there. Eight minutes into the second half here in Nashville. Still 1-0, Lipscomb in front on the 16th minute goal from Kelly Byler, assisted by Faith Adams. Shirk, double team, so she gives it up to Logan McFadden, who then tries to flick it for Perry, and the ball will spin itself out of bounds. Sharpless back for Rowlett. Toe touch, that hanger is there to claim. Carapaza up ahead. Headed back in the midfield, and now Carapaza with time to make a decision. Tried to find Byler. It's Jucker. Now Kraft. Shirk. Good read there by Ransom stepping in front. Pardon me, that's Sienna Miller who made that step up to win the ball. And the Colonels now. I believe that was 
Lemery on the far side. Again, tough to tell with how dark it is there on the far side of the pitch. It will be a throw for EKU. Perry and Rowlett going mano y mano. Perry trying to get around her, fights her way through contact, gets back to her left foot and misfires. Lipscomb is outshot EKU 11 to three tonight. Six shots on goal, including four from Kalea Perry. And if I told you that the Bisons did have a goal in this game, you would think for their six shots being on goal, credited to number 18, well, maybe she's got the one goal, but it isn't. It's Kelly Byler who has one shot on goal tonight, and it was true. McFadden, nice step in front. Really nice header, and she got her legs undercut by Maddie Lemery who again apologizes to McFadden and then is talked to by the official. And here we go. Carapaz will take the free kick right from midfield. And McFadden will trot down. What a weapon she is on the attack for these set pieces. Can really rise above the back line of the opponent and put a head on one. Doesn't get the opportunity this time as Adams will flick it ahead towards the corner, allow Kraft to try to run underneath it. The pressure will force a goal kick. Last touch by Kraft. And our first batch of substitutions here in the second half. Peyton Payne and Caitlin Andrews checking in for the Colonels. Riley Jecker, senior defender out of Lake Mary, Florida, among those coming off the pitch. One nil Lipscomb as they try to get their fourth win in a row to start conference play. Yeah, the first of four straight home matches for Lipscomb coming off that five match road trip They've got Bellarmine on Sunday, and then next weekend, North Florida on Thursday, October 6th, and at home against Jacksonville on Sunday, October 9th. So a big stretch for the Bisons. Mentioned Liberty has been impressive early on. Three wins and a tie in their first four matches. They appear to be well on their way to win number four. They lead Central Arkansas 6-0 in the second half. Eastern Kentucky, as we mentioned, will be in Clarksville on Sunday, taking on Austin P, and then they will return home. They will host Florida Gulf Coast and Stetson next weekend. Eastern Kentucky has been a really good team at home this year. Four wins and a tie in six home games. This is just their fourth road contest of the year. They are 1-1-1. One, one, and one. Kick up coming from midfield for the Colonels. A booming free kick. Katia Hanger there to head it back towards midfield.
Weiler. Craft in pursuit. EKU fends off that counter really nicely. And here they come now with the counter of their own. Beautiful passing from Eastern Kentucky as they have a chance brewing. Outside the 18, it's a shot towards Graham who is there stepping in front. EKU on a couple of occasions has put on a passing clinic. That was gorgeous what they set up there, starting from their back line, thwarting the Lipscomb attack, and then turning it into offense. And they get another shot on goal. That is their second of the night. Adams goes down and is awarded the foul. That was right in front of the EKU bench. Kraft expertly wins possession and she's alone on the far side and a hustling challenge there from the EKU defender who is now slow to get up. It will be a Lipscomb corner. Can't quite make out who that is getting up to their feet. It will be the seventh corner tonight for the Bisons as the EKU trainer will come out. That was a great effort by that Colonel to step in front of Kraft and prevent her from crossing it into the box. That's Maya Ransom, who appears to be okay. She's waving off the trainer. Kalea Perry stepping up to take this corner. There is a colonel coming off with the trainer. That was away from that play on the far side. Here we go, the corner, screaming line drive, low, and kicked out. Patty will reset, sends it back, and Byler nearly got a flick. Oh, what a save as Kraft had her shot turned away, and the ball out of bounds. What a save from Lauren Seedlock to keep this one at 1-0. One she is gotten plenty of saves tonight. That was her best. Point blank range, Shelby Kraft off the rebound as Byler tried to flick it in with her head. And Seedlock on an island, Kraft a missile that Seedlock was able to turn away. Fourth save tonight. For Seedlock. Played up ahead for Audrey Anderson. McFadden there to send it back to her keeper. And C.J. Graham boots it up, up, and away. One back. And out of bounds. We could very well remember that play later on in this match. That save from Seedlock could turn out to be pretty big. Here come the Colonels. On the attack, Shelby Kraft defending, and a free kick will up come for EKU as Kraft sent the midfielder down to the grass, and this is pretty prime territory for the Colonels here. And it looks like Bisons will send two for their wall, Adams and Shirk. And Eastern Kentucky here from just a couple yards outside the 18 will have a chance. It's a good ball, and it's punched away by Graham. On frame from the far side, and Lipscomb not out of the woods yet as the Colonels keep possession and now cleared away. EKU with some good pressure, though, as they look for an equalizer. It is Ransom for Rowlett.
Miller plays it in the middle. Kicked away. It is Rowlett again. Out of bounds. 26 minutes and change here from the Lipscomb Soccer Complex. Lipscomb holding that 1-0 lead on the goal in the first half from Kelly Byler. So far, though, EKU, it can be said, has controlled this second half. Really good chances. Of course, Lipscomb did have probably the best opportunity on a craft shot from just a few yards away that was saved by Seedlock. But in terms of tempo, in terms of possession, you got to think like EKU has certainly put their foot on the gas pedal here in the second 45. They have outshot Lipscomb 3-2 here in the second half. Good step from Patty to win the ball. Up for Byler who flicks it. Now played into the middle. Kraft is taken out and Lipscomb will get a free kick from outside the 18. So this certainly close enough for either a shot or a pass. We'll see what the Bisons elect to do. So dangerous on set pieces this year. So many weapons can step up and take this. Carapazza, who is a candidate, looks to be backing off the ball. And so it's Byler and Kalea Perry there. In fact, four Bisons around the ball right now. And the line for EKU appears to be even with the 18. They play it off for Perry. Shot deflected. Inside to Kraft. Turns. Ricocheted. Glanced off. And played back out for Carapaza. Plays it back softly into the middle. And that it is knocked away for good. And McFadden will track it down. Well, so dangerous if you're an opponent and you see Shelby Kraft in the middle of the box with possession. That time she had her shot deflected. And... That saved the day for EKU. Substitution for EKU. Sienna Miller will come out. And re-entering will be Lucy Ream, it looks like, who exited earlier, replaced by Miller, and it looks like Ream is good to go. Patty Murphy, Caitlin Andrews, the service in the middle. Now, Audrey Anderson over to Rowlett, and then a back line shot. Oh my goodness, Lucy Ream from way outside had a go at it. Ends up a touch steep. Another good passing sequence from the Colonels. And Ream let it fly from way downtown. 23 minutes to go here in the second half. Byler, what a touch up for Kalea Perry. And we're off to the races. It's Perry, what a save. Lucy Ream tracks her down from behind. Not easy to catch up with the speedster that is Kalea Perry, but Ream the hustle to get in front of that shot. The Bisons will have a corner kick. Lucy Ream, after briefly exiting with the trainer, had a couple minutes on the bench, spelled by Sianna Miller, comes back on, has a shot right off the bat, a good looking one, and then she has perhaps a goal saving tackle in the back line. Here's the corner, we'll have another. Carapaza again, five assists on the season. Among the league leaders. McFadden there, as we noted earlier, such a threat on these types of corners where she can jockey for position and go for a header. This one's over her head, it goes, and McFadden nearly had a chance at it as Byler played it back into the danger zone. McFadden, a couple inches shy of being able to make this a 2-0 game. So things starting to ratchet up in intensity here. 
as we enter the quote unquote fourth quarter of this tight contest. The difference right now, the Byler goal for the Bisons. Greta Gunn, who had that outstanding first half, double teamed, somehow fights through it. Perry tackles her from behind, and the Colonels will have a free kick. Nicely done by Greta Gunn. Ransom over for Ream. Adams got a foot on it. McFadden boots it. Byler, not on the same page, wasn't prepared to make a run. We go back to the first time that these two teams met when EKU was able to win, as here we get a pass up for Perry. Now Shirk with room has Kraft to her left, plays it to Kraft. Oh, what a touch and what a goal! Shelby Kraft, the magician! That's a Sports Center top 10 play if I've ever seen one, Shelby Kraft. Goes one way with her body, then the right foot flick past the keeper. She'll celebrate with her teammates as she gives her team a 2-0 lead here in the second half. Unbelievable finish from Shelby Kraft. The assist will go to Emanuela Shirk, who timed that pass beautifully. And it comes in the 69th minute of play. It's now Lipscomb 2, Eastern Kentucky nil. And the mountain just became a little bit taller to climb for these visitors. As Lipscomb now in six of their last eight matches has scored at least two goals. It is the fourth goal of the season for Shelby Kraft that moves her into a tie for second place on the team with Kalea Perry. Kelly Byler, after her sixth earlier tonight, still leads the squad. But Shelby Kraft, of course, a center back by trade, has moved into more of a attacking midfielder position where she is around the ball even more. And we noted that during a previous game, but really the shift in strategy, you know, Spring 2021, she anchored a three-back scheme, and then over the offseason going into fall 2021, O'Brien kind of made the shift to push her higher up the field, moved to a 4-4-2, kind of that holding midfielder where she has to cover a large part of the field. And that allows her to contribute more to the Bison's attack, and that has resulted, of course, in four goals last season and now four goals so far midway through this season. Another chance, Byler a flick, and it trickles back towards the keeper, Lauren Seedlock. 19 minutes and counting here. Match number four in ace on play for both teams. EKU in danger of dropping their first conference contest after coming into tonight. One win, two ties in their first three ace on games. Be a hint into the game for Lipscomb. Pursuing Lanter, who has her pass intercepted by McFadden. Kalea Perry is being held. Oh, and some extracurricular contact as Audrey Anderson and Kalea Perry not on the best of terms. And we will get a card. It'll go to Audrey Anderson, a yellow. And Kalea Perry and Anderson I don't think they're uh, going to be sharing a meal after the game. Pretty clear hold from Anderson, and Perry had her hands up to show the referee. And then a couple extra shoves after the fact, going both ways. So Carapaza will take the free kick. That is our first card.
Arapaza waiting for the signal, and here we go. Played into the box. Hint was there. Craft lurking and played back to Seedlock. By the way, Kylie Fitzgerald into the match for EKU. Grace Oliver on for Lipscomb. Greta Gunn. Back for a teammate. Rowlett gets it stolen by Byler. Lanter now sends it deep for Graham to recover. That uh, game between Liberty and Central Arkansas has gone final. The final score, Liberty 6, Central Arkansas nothing. Still scoreless between North Alabama and Queens in the second half and scoreless between Bellarmine and Austin P in the second half. Tori Wheeler comes back on, as does Bailey Ettinger. For Lipscomb, Byler will get a rest, as will Perry. Nice throw up for Wheeler. Pursued by Ransom, knocks it away, and a throw and upcoming for the Bisons. It's Wheeler, and Lipscomb was offside. That was Ettinger, who was trying to play the give and go with Wheeler. And freshman from Roswell, Georgia, was just a touch offside. That marks officially the seventh time that Lipscomb has been whistled for being offside tonight. First six times came in the first half. They have certainly timed up their runs better here in the second half. It felt like every couple of minutes there on the first 45, we were getting the flag raised. Good hustle from Maddie Lemery, who has been kept in check tonight. She was really the main offensive threat. Over the past couple of weeks for the Colonels, three goals, all three of her goals coming in the last six matches, but just hasn't had a lot of opportunities to impact the action tonight. And that is due in part to the strong play of the center backs for Lipscomb, Logan McFadden and Katia Hanger. Not an easy back line to deal with for any opposing forward. Bouncing around in the air. Gunn gets it to Lemery. Tries to split a pair of Bisons. Seventy fifth minute here in the Music City. Lipscomb trying to move to a perfect four and zero in a Sun play and get three more points. Currently looking up at Liberty in the standings with, of course, one game fewer played officially. Eastern Kentucky has held their ground for the most part. It's just been this constant pressure from the Lipscomb attack that has resulted in the two goals. EKU has generated some pretty good chances. Six shots to show for it, including a couple on target. C.J. Graham has had to make four saves tonight, three of them here in the second half. Nice looking service, up, headed back into the danger zone. McFadden plays it back out, and it's Lanter, scuffs it a little bit, 
And the rebound, Graham will have to, oh, a collision. And Maddie Lemery went soaring into C.J. Graham as that ball was played up and curling back towards the line and no card has been handed out. And the Lipscomb Bisons wanting the explanation, Steidel and Graham were there. Lemery and Graham collided as Graham went up for that ball. Lemery trying to make something happen. Ball played up ahead. Nice header by Ransom. Kraft, a pass up ahead to herself. Now the service. Oliver was there. And strong defending there from the back line as Oliver collided with a colonel. Gun turned towards the middle, knocked away. Wheeler, can she keep it in? Out of her reach. And Lanter will have the throw, but first a pair of substitutions. Audrey Anderson will exit. Couple of new faces, including Myla Sharpless. So Peyton Payne comes off. Maddie Murphy comes on for EKU additionally. So Sharpless and Murphy on, Payne and Anderson off. 11 minutes and change here before the final whistle, EKU if they're going to steal a point in this one, we'll need a goal sooner rather than later to spark a comeback. Carapaza on the ground and snuffed out by Lanter, who mishits it. It goes out of bounds. The Ransom just told her, hey, we got time. She just held a hand up. Lanter wins it back, so takes it upon herself to win possession back. Kirk being hounded, gets it off to Gunn. Plays it up ahead for Sharpless. Oh, Lemery between the legs of McFadden. It's Lemery on the break, stops, pauses, gets it to her left. A shot just wide left. But a nice sequence from Maddie Lemery. Gets a round of applause from the EKU fans. Kind of went one on four there and nearly Found the back of the net. Lemery again, three goals in her last six matches. Senior forward out of Lake Mary, Florida. Listed at 5'5". Five five. Really nice with the dribbling moves there, showcasing some of that skill. Under 10 to go. Here in the Music City, Lipscomb led 1-0 at the break. Added a second goal in the 69th minute from Shelby Kraft on the assist from Emanuela Shirk. So it's been two of the top goal scoring threats making their presence felt tonight for Lipscomb. Kelly Byler got her sixth of the season in the 16th minute, and Kraft got her fourth of the season in the 69th minute. EKU wins a throw, deep in the attacking third. Sixteen shots tonight for Lipscomb, nine for EKU. Six of those nine have come here in the second half, though, including four shots on goal. They've forced five C.J. Graham saves in all. Fouls evenly distributed, both teams with ten. One card tonight, and it was issued to Audrey Anderson. That was a yellow. Lipscomb has taken nine corners to EKU's one. And that is pretty emblematic of 
how tonight has gone in terms of the attacking pressure from the Bisons. Start to finish, EKU has had spurts of some really good opportunities, creating things for themselves in the midfield and into the attack, turning defense into offense. A really nice recovery from Lipscomb to snuff out each one of those opportunities. Again, looking ahead for both teams, Eastern Kentucky will be in Clarksville on Sunday to take on the Austin P. Governors, and then they'll return home next weekend to face Florida Gulf Coast and Stetson. Lipscomb, meanwhile, will host Bellarmine on Sunday. If you're unable to come out to Lipscomb Soccer Complex, we will have the live stream for you on the Lipscomb Sports YouTube. Greta Gunn, nice looking service, just nobody home. Couple of Colonels in front. Couple of Colonels behind it, and now here come the Bisons with the counter. It's Edinger on an island with Ransom, and Ransom comes up big with the clearance. Hey, Ransom, the junior from Ohio, a transfer from Cleveland State originally. He's come up big on plenty of occasions tonight. Kept this game within reach for Eastern Kentucky. Patty, nice two-man action with Grace Oliver on the ground, and it almost got to Tori Wheeler, who would have had a wide-open shot on goal. Wheeler, lots of green grass in front, up to the middle, left foot, off the thigh of Ransom, played out to Ettinger. Wheeler again, stops, starts, surges. And nice one-on-one -on -one defending from Caitlin Rowlett. Fitzgerald flicks it up ahead, intended for Murphy, but it does go out of play. And Emily Patty will take the throw with five minutes in change here. Time not on the Colonel's side as they trail by two goals. Came into tonight, a pair of unbeaten teams in conference play, and so far it is Lipscomb, the defending champs, who have looked the part. Came in 3-0 in conference, in position to move to 4-0 as they start this homestand. Four matches in a row here at the Lipscomb Soccer Complex. Lipscomb not looking like they are letting their foot off the gas anytime soon. Here comes Steidel. Pass cut off, intended for Wheeler. It's who else but Lanter? Fancy footwork and a big time collision with Lydia Hint. And the throw in upcoming for the Colonels. But first, a substitution. Four new Bisons, two new Colonels. We'll try our best. Among those coming in for Lipscomb is. Kalea Perry, Faith Adams, Kelly Byler, and Emanuela Shirk. Kara Haas coming on for EKU. And I couldn't quite make out who the second colonel was. We'll wait for the live stats for that second name. But uh, pretty much for Lipscomb, the star is back out there. The starting 11 to finish out this game is Sharpless with the foul, sends Shirk tumbling down. It is Tatiana Jones as well for the Colonels checking in on for Maddie Murphy. Offside was Perry. That's the uh, Second time that we've had an offside flag here in the second half on the Bisons after six 
in the opening 45 minutes. Kalea Perry has done everything right. She has got all the shots in the world, a lot of shots on goal, but she just has not been rewarded with that goal as of yet. Could this time be different? She shoots. It's knocked away. She'll add another shot to her tally. Her team will get a corner kick. Perry officially tonight now with nine shots, including three, make that four on goal. Four goals on the season for Perry. Lots of bodies there on the far corner as they jostle for possession. Eventually the ball goes out of play and EKU takes the throw in. It's Perry with Shirk behind her. Perry doubled. <laughs> Jogging towards the near sideline, now finds Shirk. The white jerseys converge on Shirk. And we'll have a Lipscomb throw. Just over two minutes to go. Lipscomb in the driver's seat. Looking for win number seven this season. Looking to improve to four and one here at home with that lone loss being that weird game to Idaho State. Lost that game 1-0 on an own goal and that's been the only blemish at home. Lipscomb so good here at Lipscomb Soccer Complex. And adding to that stellar home reputation here with their performance tonight. It has been a complete team performance for these Bisons. Lots of quick counters. Stout on defense, controlling the ball in the midfield, and then just some absolute strikes, some heady plays from their veterans. One goal in the first half, one in the second half, and they lead 2-0. Katia Hanger clears it before Tiatiana Jones could get there. The trip from Perry, free kick coming for EKU. Sharpless lined up to take it. Might be a touch too far for a shot, but with Sharpless's leg, you just don't know. Here we go. It is towards the goal and it's too steep. And that might have been the last best chance for EKU on this Thursday night. Quick turnaround for both teams, EKU be in Clarksville on Sunday. Lipscomb takes on Bellarmine on Sunday. As the clock counts down, an entertaining match between two new A-Sun rivals. Each one of their three games now has been pretty good soccer. Eastern Kentucky won the first matchup last season in the regular season. Lipscomb responded with a 4-0 win in the semifinals last year. And here in 2022, Lipscomb again, 2-0 the win here at Lipscomb Soccer Complex. Goals in the 16th minute from Kelly Byler on an assist from Faith Adams. And again, Lipscomb buries it with a dagger in the 69th minute on the goal from Shelby Kraft, her fourth of the season on the assist from Emanuela Shirk. Lipscomb improves to 4-0 in conference play. They get to 7-4-1 overall. They are now 4-1 here at home. Eastern Kentucky drops their first conference contest. They are now 1-1-2 in A-Sun action. 5-3-2 overall. Again, up next for Eastern Kentucky, a road contest at Austin P on Sunday. Lipscomb will have Bellarmine here at home. I think that'll just about do it. 
From all of us here at Lipscomb Athletics, I'm Noah Severson saying so long from Nashville where the final score in this ASUN contest, Lipscomb